is people sort of accepted the evidence of geology, but then they reject the evidence of biology, which says the rest of the story is pretty much gone. Then we have creationism is the one to worry about. Uh, the Discovery Institute is small. They are a PR firm, primarily. And what they do is provide a facade. They provide a set of convenient excuses for creationists to use to get around a few problems, legal problems they have with trying to get to stuff in public school. All the creationism is not so popular, surprisingly. There's, it, it, it's one of these compromises, and a lot of people don't like compromises. The big one is this one, Young Earth Creationism. Young Earth Creationism is all over the place. I'm sure there are Young Earth Creationists right here in Minot, North Dakota. There may even be some in this room. Uh, it's, it's a huge movement. Uh, we can look at the money. Uh, Answers in Genesis, which is right now is the front for Young Earth Creationists, is gigantic. We're talking millions of dollars every year. They just finished building a $27 million museum in Kentucky. Uh, their counterpart is the National Center for Science Education, which is a small group based in Berkeley, California, that's out there trying to promote good science, trying to promote evolution. And when you compare the budgets of the two, it's shocking. It's like 20 times the budget of NCSE is going to young earth creationists like that. Okay, so we've got these different approaches. Um, I actually I actually don't think of these as intelligent design, older creationism, and younger creationism. I have my own personal beliefs about what they are, and if we go to the next. Uh, intelligent design is a group of deceitful posers. These are professional liars. Like I said, they won't even come out and say what they think about the age of the earth. What they are there for is to provide a gloss a pseudoscientific veneer over creationism. They are the most dishonest bunch of people I know. They're extremely annoying that way. Uh, but what they're constantly doing is trying to game. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, well, anyway, so they're, they're kind of frauds of the yeah, creationism here. Really. All the creationism, yeah, I think they're the most pathetic bikers. Uh, they, these are people who can't make up their minds. They're smart enough to re recognize some of the evidence, in particular the geological evidence that says the Earth is four and a half billion years old, and they, they will not reject that. But at the same time, they're so hung up on the authority of the Bible that what they do is invent excuses to fit the Bible to the evidence. And they're also kind of annoying. Uh, the ones I really like, next one, uh, the younger creationists. <laughs> These, I, I seriously think these people are evil. Okay? They have got a policy of pushing the most amazing, incredibly stupid ideas on people. That you can't help but think of them as malevolent. And when you sit down and talk with them, they are so ignorant. Now, I, I don't know, there, there are some of you who are probably younger Earth creationists, and you're saying, you're thinking to yourself, is this guy calling me evil? Uh, <laughs> Let me qualify it a little bit. I think they're all victims, every single one of these people. Then what has happened is that we've got people that have been pushing bad ideas on people. That's the evil part. And the majority of creationists are just going along with what they were taught. So it's, it's one of these difficult situations where, yeah, this, this is, these are evil ideas, these are wrong ideas, but they're often promoted for very good reasons. And most often what happens is that people associate these ideas with the security of their church, with the morality of their family, with all these kinds of virtues that even, even the atheist evolutionists share. We think those are great things. But what has happened is that these have gotten all tangled up with a set of bogus ideas, very stupid things. It's very unfortunate. Okay, next slide. What I want to talk about now is, is Three creationist strategies that we're seeing in play. Why are these people so popular? Why is Answers in Genesis making so much money? When I just told you their ideas are really stupid, I'll show some, I'll explain some evidence behind why I think their ideas are really stupid. How can they do so well? We've got three main strategies that they follow. 
that can convince people to go along with them. And the first one is this one, pandering to Christianity. Now, there probably are a number of people here who are Christians, right? In that, there you go. There are many people who think, well, Christianity is my path to salvation, it's how I raise a moral family, it's how I become a good, constructive person in society. And they tie up their, their ideas about these virtues in their religion, which is all well and good, but it's a false association. But what that means is that someone can easily co-opt these people just by announcing, well, my beliefs are the true Christian beliefs. If you don't believe what I think, you must be a bad Christian, and you're going to hell, and so is your family. And you're going to corrupt all of society. And all these sorts of things come into play. And, and it's, it's easy to win people into accepting some bizarre academic ideas just on that basis alone. So, pandering to create Christianity is an important one. Uh, if you, you know, I just mentioned the Discovery Institute, and I told you to kind of avoid answering these questions. The Discovery Institute does not publicly talk about God, they will not mention it in their PR. Up there, PR. But when you talk to people, what you discover is that they are all Christian. Some of them are fundamentalist evangelical Christians. They're fanatical about their Christianity. The Discovery Institute was founded by Philip Johnson, who specifically said that his goal was to defeat materialism and return this country to its Christian roots. So it's Christianity through and through, except they're denying it. Okay, so pandering to Christianity is one strategy, and it's a very effective strategy, because probably most of us do not have bad association with Christianity. It's like saying, my beliefs about science are the true beliefs of Santa Claus and puppy dogs, and so people will have to accept them. Okay, next strategy, next slide. <coughs> oh, I was going to mention, it's self-Christianity, in case it's no, public science. Next slide. Appeal to fairness. And okay, click here one more time. Uh, what is fairness all about? Well, it's, it's this belief that it's, it's a very American thing, right? That you don't want to exclude somebody. You can't give everybody a chance. It's only fair that we teach all these ideas in the classroom. That's what they're saying. Uh, what they don't take into account, though, is that you can't just teach every idea. There are bad ideas out there. Creationism is a bad idea. It's unsupported by the evidence. It's rejected by scientists. It's not something that should be taught in the classroom. And what they have to do is play games. They say, okay, well, it's only fair that we teach this idea in the classroom. It's only fair that we do this intelligent design in the classroom. Uh, but think about fairness. This is not fair at all. When 99.9% .9 of all biologists are saying, Evolution, it works. We got the evidence. And you've got a tiny fringe, a few crackpots, who say, now we believe in intelligent design. But uh, they're, they're moving the scales in order to get it into, into the classroom. Classrooms don't have time to teach every single thing, right? What we should be teaching is the mainstream ideas, the core ideas of a discipline. Not the stuff that's kind of crazy and out there on the edge. And that's what intelligent design creation is. Uh, we've got some replies to this sort of thing. We can go to the next slide. There we go. Uh, if we're going to teach both sides, uh, evolution, then there's two sides of these other issues. Why aren't we teaching both sides of all Why aren't we teaching that the Earth is flat in our classrooms? Why don't we teach astrology instead of astronomy? Oh no, to be fair, we should teach both, right? This is the argument they're making. Uh, the Civil War, we're in the North, right? So this, this is safe to say. The North won. Why shouldn't we teach that the South really kind of goes against the fact? So this is part of the strategy, is, is throwing out this, these off-the-wall ideas and saying they ought to be included in the curriculum. Which is grossly unfair. They haven't learned a place in the curriculum. Okay, next slide. 